Hi there. Welcome back to the show. We have a uh, we have a uh, fine uh, program uh, for you folks tonight. Uh, we're going to uh, meet the man who went up in the armchair or lawn chair a couple of minutes from now. The Godfather of Soul, James Brown, is here. And they called me that for a while, but no. The <laughs> title has been passed on, and James now holds that honor. And also Carmine... Now, this says Carmine O. Pelosi. Is that his name, Carmine O. Pelosi? Good old Irish name, the old Pelosi family. <laughs> He'll be here to talk about uh, communications uh, bugging systems and protecting yourself in this uh, day and age of uh, hatred and tyranny. <laughs> what a nasty way to start the show, isn't it? Well, uh, my, my next guest, uh, last week, a man from Southern California grabbed the attention of the world when he fulfilled a dream he had had for 20 years, a dream of soaring three miles straight up in the air, sitting in a lawn chair. Uh, we're going to take a look at some videotape of that accomplishment right now. The voices you're going to hear are of my next guest in the air and his girlfriend on the ground. This would be Mr. Larry Walters going up in the lawn chair. just like NASA, doesn't it? Well, uh, we're delighted to have this gentleman with us tonight. Please welcome Larry Walters. Hi, Larry. Have a seat. This is a phenomenal thing. Where did you get the idea to do this? Uh, when did it hit you? You said it was a 20-year dream? Yes, sir. Uh, it hit me when I was a uh, young boy, about 13 years old. I was in an Army Navy surplus store. So a weather balloon dangling from the ceiling, and I just got the idea uh, to put uh, to inflate these balloons, and I figured if I had enough of them, it'd lift me. Uh -huh. The idea was just you know, the float. Yeah. And I was fascinated by it, and I fulfilled the 20-year dream. Have you done anything else in attempting to uh, make your dream come true between before uh, now? Well, the main thing I did uh, at the urging of an associate, uh, Ron Richland, who also at tape you saw, he was he's the man responsible for it. I'm sorry both he and my fiance Carol Van Dusen, who put up the money for the entire project, could not be here. But uh, at his urging, I took a parachute course, and I had a very good parachute on, very reliable, uh -huh. and I was prepared at one time, I was thinking of actually using it at 16,000 feet. Mm -hmm. What kind of planning goes into this? Because when you say you hook balloons to a lawn okay. chair, it doesn't sound, you know, like... First of all... Like Neil Armstrong probably wouldn't be involved there. Uh, the thing is, I call it American ingenuity. Yeah. That's what I call it, sir. And... Uh, you, can, you heard the audio tapes. Uh, I was in. I had confidence in myself in the craft, and I knew what I was doing. Yeah. I really knew what I was doing. Uh, now, w when when you took off there, uh, you you actually lifted off prematurely, didn't yes. you? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, the idea was to be tethered at a hundred feet for approximately an hour, and about a half hour before launch, we were going to notify FAA and a few airports and let them know this lawn chair was going up with uh -huh. all these balloons, <laughs> right? And I was gonna, but uh, unfortunately, which is on the tape, the tether line broke prematurely, and that's when my whole ground crew panicked. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, how did the, the? Why did it break? The, there was no one to take the slack up on it. It was a 550-pound test nylon line, and uh -huh. the wind was blowing rather strong over the, uh, just above the, uh, about maybe the first couple hundred feet, and uh, it just took that cluster up and me in it and uh, snapped that line. And we have it on tape and film, and uh, that's, it sounded like a gunshot uh -huh. when that line snapped. Uh, how many balloons did you have? Approximately 43, sir. And they were filled with? Helium gas. Helium. Uh, did you, was that an estimate? Were you just guessing that 43 would get you up? Oh, no, no. We had done much prior testing prior to this. We had uh, test inflations. We, we knew that each balloon would lift approximately 14 to 15 pounds. Uh -huh. And so we just multiplied that. And now, is, you know, it, 
Is it expensive to get that much helium? Uh, well, like I say, uh, Carol, she financed it. She bought all the gas and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the gas and the balloons uh, came to $3,000 uh -huh. and she bought my parachute for me. Thank God bless her. And uh, that was another $800 and yeah, she went heavily into debt now, to, to the, see my dream come true. The, I read a figure this afternoon that said the whole project cost around $15,000. That is correct because we were going to originally go from the Mojave Desert. Mm -hmm. And it was Carol's idea to uh, launch from her backyard. <laughs> uh, um, Only because there was a hospital about a half mile down the road. Really? Yes, sir. Uh, now, what was your once you went up? Uh, what was your means of controlling the lift or descending? Or okay, I had complete control of the craft, and we have tapes, audio tapes. Yes, I did. <laughs> I had complete control of my craft, and uh, I mean, even when when the line snapped, and you know, I even I didn't expect that. Yeah. But I had complete control of the craft. Uh, I had an altimeter right under my chin, and it was showing me my rate of ascent. And I had uh, several hundred pounds of water ballast. And so what happened was I was trying to catch an easterly wind current. And when I went up to 16,000 feet, I knew I couldn't go up much higher. I'd be a dead man. So I got my BB pistol, which I was going to tether. I was going to strap yeah. that on at uh, my last hour of preparation with a few other instruments. And uh, anyway, I got my BB pistol, shot out about 10 or 12 of the balloons. Slow my rate of ascent. Because so I was rising about a thousand feet per minute. My. That was much too fast. Uh, and you just shot the balloons out and that caused you to come down? Well, it was carefully. I shot the outer balloons out first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew what I was doing. Uh, no, but, but there's so many questions I could ask you about this because, as you said, you really had most of the variables controlled. But why I, a lawn chair? What, I mean. American ingenuity. Why not a lawn chair? Yeah. I mean, it was the best. Believe me, I, I looked at baskets and I looked at gondolas, sir. And uh, the lawn chair was the best suited means. Yeah. Was it, it just it, one of those folding kind that you, you, you take No, to and the I'm beach? not going to uh, mention the uh, department store where I got it at anymore. It's gotten too much free publicity. Yeah. But uh, now what, what I put it through my own torture test. Mm -hmm. I mean, it went through the Larry torture test. Yeah. And it survived that, and I knew it could uh, fulfill my dream. What happened uh, when... when uh... <laughs> What happened when you when you contacted the Los Angeles International Airport, or your friend on the ground contacted? Okay, the my friend. First of all, when he told him, he says, "You're not going to believe this, but there's a guy up there in a lawn chair with 43 balloons." And oh, really? And uh, we got this on tape and yeah. audio. But uh, he said, "You're not going to believe." He's, he just was. Everyone was panicking because this was totally unexpected. The yeah. cable snapping. You were you were actually also seen by other other aircraft. I right? was spotted evidently by uh, Delta and a TDWA uh, <laughs> flight. At 16,000 feet. 16,000 feet. This is uh, truly amazing. And uh, we're going to pause, and Larry will be back here with us, and we'll continue discussing this man's odyssey right after. We'll take another break. Welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us, this gentleman is uh, Larry Walters, who recently uh, went up about 16,000 feet uh, with the helium balloons and a lawn chair. And uh, was this, uh, were you frightened? Uh, did... No, sir. Well, couldn't you fall out of the chair? No, impossible. Well, I've fallen out of lawn chairs in my backyard. Uh... You wouldn't have fallen out of my chair. Yeah. I guarantee it. You would not have fallen out of my chair. You were pretty well strapped in? I wasn't strapped in at all. I didn't have a safety belt or a seat you're belt. You're just sitting in the chair. I was sitting in the chair. Uh, Believe me, I knew what I was doing. But now, what? What? <laughs> but what? What guarantee do you have when the thing, when the chair lifts, that you won't be pitched forward or left or no, right? What kind in of? In fact, I had the chair pitched. We have this on videotape. We had it pitched back in about a 45 degree angle, uh -huh. or 40 degree angle, and I was pitched back intentionally. Yeah. And then when I was strapped in, even if I had to jump out, it would have been a little difficult to get out of that chair. No, there was no need for a seat belt. Uh, what about the uh, problem with other aircraft? You mentioned that you were spotted by uh, two commercial airline. Uh, right. planes. Now, did you actually see any That's other? an honor. No, I did not see or hear any, uh, the roar of any jet engines. Uh -huh. But, but you, at least you... they confirmed my altitude, which was 16,000 feet. Yeah. Uh, did you have any, uh, uh, were you going to do anything to let people know ahead of time that you, there might be a guy in a lawn chair in yes. the area? Yes. You know, that's when I was going to be tethered for a, uh, an hour, and then prior, a half hour before, I was going to cut myself loose, because nobody else would do it for me. Mm -hmm. uh, my ground crew were going to notify the proper authorities. We're gonna, we were going to give them a half hour notice. Now, what I did was wrong. I'm not making excuses, but we were going to give the FAA and all the local airports a half-hour notice. Yeah. And it's by the grace of God that, you know, it yeah, didn't no, hit a plane or... Now, why, know, was, why was this wrong? How were you different from any other balloonist? 
First of all, <laughs> most balloonists don't go from clusters of uh, weather balloons, and they're very fragile, too. Uh -huh. I mean, you could poke your finger through one of them, they're so fragile. Yeah. Or a pin. They can be popped with a pin. That's how fragile they so are. So you did, it, it, there, there is a law against this. There's a law against uh, taking up a balloon or balloons uh, without a license, and the FAA already said if, they, if I had a license, they would have revoked it. Mm -hmm. But since I don't have a license, uh. they can't revoke it. Yeah. So. Now, would you do this again? Um... No, this was the fulfillment of a 20-year dream. Yeah. And I accomplished my dream. Yeah. Now, how does that feel, having succeeded in achieving what you always I, wanted I, to do? I achieved inner peace. I've achieved inner <laughs> peace within myself. Really? Really? I'm a happier person today. Well, that's good. I like that. uh, a happier person for it. This is a fascinating story, Larry, and, and I'm grateful that you could come all the way to New York City and share it with us. Well, I thank you for inviting me, sir. Anytime. If you want to do something else, let us know, sir. I will. Thank you. Larry Walters, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back after you take a look at this.